HET 194 NAE Preparation Week 9 and 10 Electrical Fundamentals. The objectives of this week is to support the HVAC learner to understand what causes electrons to flow, gain knowledge of what makes up an atom, discuss electric motor force, discuss what is power and power factor, develop an understanding of Ohm's law, explain resistance, explain voltage, explain current, and calculate conversions from electrical energy to heat energy. In this introduction, in the HVAC refrigeration industry, the equipment is powered by electrical current and electrical control devices and are used to operate the equipment automatically. Therefore, a HVAC technician must have a proper understanding of basic and advanced electrical systems. Without this knowledge, the technician will struggle with the simplest problems. This week's assignment will give the HVAC learner a review of basic electricity before moving into more advanced electrical systems. This week's vocabulary will cover alternating current, direct current, ampere, atom, conductor, electrical power, electron, matter, Ohm's law, voltage, and watts. What are atoms consist of? Atom consists of a nucleus, which may have a proton and a neutron. The nucleus is in the center of the atom. Around the nucleus is the valence shells, which contains the electrons. The electrons actually flow around the nucleus and travel at very high speeds. The electrons are negative charge and the protons are positive charge. The nucleus has a neutral charge. What makes a good conductor? In the outer valence shell is what determines the conductivity of the material. Any substance that have one or two electrons in its outer shell will be a good conductor. Copper, silver, gold, and aluminum have only one or two electrons in its valence shell and are very good conductors. So what make poor conductors? Any substance or material that have more than five electrons become a good insulator. A semiconductor is a poor conductor and a poor insulator. To have an insulator, it is important to keep current from flowing into unwanted areas, such as wires. Wires are coated normally with some type of insulation material, such as rubber or plastic, which will impede the flow of current through it. Attraction of electrons. Positive and negative charge will attract each other. The same charge or like charges will repel each other. This attraction and repulsion is important for mechanical action of motors. So therefore, understanding how um, this attraction or repulsion works, it's what generates a motor to operate and turn a rotor to get mechanical work. Static electricity. Static electricity is the simplest form of current flow and it is not controllable. Such things as static electricity like a spark when you rub your feet on a carpet and touch a doorknob and it will cause a very small shock. Other type of static electricity like lightning outdoors, it's uh, uncontrollable and but it controls a, a very high potential of energy. So any type of uh, static electricity such as from the old style of electrical tape which we call friction tape, if you pull it very rapidly it would cause uh, static electricity to form between it. Electricity produced from chemical reactions. Batteries produce a chemical reaction that in turn generate a direct current from the uh, electricity. It will form electricity by uh, the chemicals inside of it connecting to the plates and it will and there's a load and conductors connected to the battery 
it will allow current to flow to the load. Batteries will have a position that will be a positive pulse and a negative pulse and it will only allow current to flow when there is a load connected to it. So batteries in the chemical reaction will actually store electrons um, inside of the battery itself. So the strength of the battery is based on the number of, of cells it has. The higher the number of cells, the higher the voltage of the battery. Types of current flow. Electricity produced from magnetism. Alternating current can be produced from a magnetic field being introduced into a wire. When a wire is moved through a magnetic field, the electrons in the wire will move. If a wire is put into a coil, the voltage will increase based on the number of turns in the coil of wire. Thereby, the more turns, or the bigger the coil, the stronger the voltage will be in that coil and it be produced. So as the magnetic field is induced into a coil, the faster the coils move through the uh, magnetic field, the faster the current will. So what makes a good conductor? For a current to flow, it needs to have a path non-obstructed to allow full flow of power to the load. Therefore, materials with only one or two electrons in it, its valence shell will work. Because copper is an abundance and in its availability, it will have one electron in its outer shell valence and its cost is relatively low. It is used over other type of materials. So copper is one of the best conductors used because of its low cost and because of its abundance. So what makes a good insulator? Because conductors allow current to flow easily, insulators are used to impede the current flow. For safety reasons, insulators are used to keep current from flowing in areas where it can be unsafe. Materials such as rubber, plastic, ceramics, and glass are used to insulate current from potential dangerous areas. Power source can be either AC or DC power. But the power source is always available and sometimes we call that potential energy because it's there, it's not being used, it's not generating an energy or consuming an energy, but it's there. So all electrical circuits will contain three basic items. The power source, the conductor, and the load. The power source is the beginning of the electrical circuit and it is the source of energy to operate the tended piece of equipment, the load. The power source can be either alternating current or, again, DC current. So a conductor, some of the characteristics of conductors are, it must have very low resistance. All material have some resistance, but it should be extremely low. I mean, when you measure the resistance, it's uh, almost read nothing. It must allow current to flow without impedance, which means restriction. It is mostly made of copper or aluminum because it's cost and availability. There are many other types of conductors, but do not fit this criteria of abundance and cost. A load is used to do work. So loads are anything that consume energy. Conductors do not consume energy, thus it allows current to flow to the load without losing and losses of energy. All loads do some type of work. Some of the types of loads are motors, light bulbs, transformers, relays, and contactor coils, electrical heaters, and solenoid coils. So what is voltage? It can be called a potential difference. Voltage is the force of the electrical system 
that pushes the electrons through a electrical circuit. In comparison, if we take the comparison of water and how it flows to our uh, sinks and other type of appliances, we measure water force in PSI, pressure per square inch. But voltage is the measurement for electricity, the force that is pushed the electrons through the, the wire. To have potential difference, there must be a positive and a negative current in the circuit. The load in the electrical system is what divides the positive side from the negative side. So there will always be a difference from both sides, the positive and a negative, which we call the potential difference. For current to flow through a circuit, it must be a difference in the current flow. So resistance. Resistance is the slowing down or impeding the flow of electrons in a electrical circuit. All loads have resistance while conductors do not have resistance or very low resistance. Resistance is needed to consume energy or it will pass through the load and will not operate. The higher the resistance in a circuit or load, the higher amount of voltage the load will contain or drop. So current is the flow of electrical or electrons. The electrical flow is the speed or movement of the electrons in a circuit. So when the resistance is increased in a circuit, the current will decrease. When the resistance in the, is decreased in a circuit, the current will increase. Kilowatts or watts is the measurement of energy. Basically, measuring energy of electricity, it is basically looking at the relationship between the voltage and the current flow. So the force and the movement of the electrons. So watts is the measurement of electrical energy. A thousand watts equal one kilowatt. To determine the amount of energy a load is consuming, we will measure the energy in watts. Therefore, watts is the voltage applied to the circuit multiplied by its current flow. Watts equals voltage times amperage. Sometimes it could be expressed power. So in other words, power is watts. So power equals voltage times current or P equals E times I. A power factor is a measurement when we're dealing with energy. The energy used in an electrical circuit is consumed by the load in a circuit. However, there are always some losses due to inefficiencies in a circuit. The power factor is the true power measured with a watt meter divided by the calculated power and is expressed as a percentage. The power factor is only used in AC circuits. Ohm's law is a way to understand the relationship between how voltage current and resistance and how it will affect each other. So voltage is expressed as the letter E, the capital E. Current is expressed as the capital letter I. Resistance is expressed as the capital letter R. So look at these different formulas. Voltage equals E equals I times R current is I equals E divided by R and resistance equals R equals E divided by I. A series circuit is basically having a load. A load is anything that consumes electricity such as a light bulb or electric heater. Motors are loads also. 
So a series circuit is a circuit that have only one path for current to flow. It can have more than one load, but the uh, current must flow through all the loads at the same time and the same rate. The series circuit will have a power source, conductors, and at least one load. For example, since there is only one path for current to flow, many of us understand how Christmas tree lights. If you take one bulb out, they all go out. A series circuit, if you take one load out, there is an open circuit. So, the rules of series circuits is voltage. In a series circuit, the total voltage is the sum of all the individual voltage of each load. So basically, we measure the voltage drop at each load, or each light bulb, or each uh, resistor. Add them up, that would be the total voltage. Current in a series circuit works in this way. The current is the same for all the, the loads. So in other words, it, no matter where you check the current draw, it will be the same. So it will be equal throughout the whole system. The total resistance of the resistors in a series circuit is equal to the sum of all the individual resistors. So if you want to determine what the total resistance in a series circuit, just add all the individual resistance up and you have the total resistance in the circuit. So expressing the rules of a series circuit. Voltage equal the same, we add them all together, the sum of all the individual uh, voltage will equal the total. The resistance the sum of all the individual resistance will equal the total. The current is the same throughout the circuit no matter where you check it. Here's a diagram of a series circuit. It has two bulbs in series with each other. The power source is a battery. There's a fuse and there's a switch. So basically if you look at Ohm's law, it states basically Electricity equals the current times the resistance. So E equals electricity, I equals current flow, and R is the resistance. A series circuit is the simplest circuit. The conductors, controls, and protection devices that is in the system, such as loads, and a power source are connected with only one path for the current to flow. The resistance of each device can be different. The same amount of current will flow through each of those no matter what the resistance in the circuit is. The voltage across each will be different. It would be based on its resistance. So the resistance of each load will determine what the voltage drop of each load will be. If the path is broken, no current will flow and no part of the circuit works. Going back to the same example with the Christmas tree, take a light bulb out, all the lights go out. So what type of circuit is a parallel circuit? Parallel circuits have more than one branch line and will have at least one load per branch line. Parallel circuits have the same voltage for each branch line and the voltage will be the same as the total voltage or the source of the voltage. A parallel circuit will have multiple loads, a power source, and conductors to join each branch to uh, line together. So a parallel circuit has more than one path for current to flow, which is different from a series circuit which only have one path for current to flow, but a parallel circuit has more than one path. That's what makes it parallel. The same voltage is applied across each branch line. If the load resistance in each branch line is the same, the current in each branch line will be the same. 
if the load resistance in each branch line is different, the current in each branch line will be also different. If one branch line is broken, current will continue to flow to the other branches. So the rules of parallel circuits. If two or more components are connected in a parallel circuit, they have the same potential difference, which we call voltage, across their ends. The potential difference across the components are the same in magnitude, and they also have identical polarities. The same voltage is applied or applicable to all circuits components connected in parallel. The total current is the sum of the current through the individual components in accordance to Kirchhoff current law, which we'll discuss later. So, voltage in a parallel circuit is the same for all the elements or all the branch lines. So, each branch line will receive the same amount of voltage. So if the total voltage or the source of the power supply is 120, each branch line will receive 120 also. The current in each individual resistor is found by Ohm's law, factoring out the voltage gives. So in other words, to find the total resistance of all the components, add the reciprocal of the resistance of each component or branch line and take the reciprocal of the sum. The total resistance will always be less than the value of the smaller resistance. So when you're looking at a parallel circuit and you want to know what the total resistance is, one thing to keep in mind, the total resistance will always be less than the smallest individual resistance in either of the branch lines. So that is very important to keep in mind if you're doing calculations when you determine what the resistance in a, a parallel circuit is, is basically a quick check is to know that always it will be less. A parallel circuit has multiple paths or branches to ground or going through the circuit. Therefore, in the event of an open and a circuit in one of the branch, current will continue to flow through the remaining. Number two, each branch receives the source voltage. Number three, current flow through each branch can be different, and it will be different based on the resistance in each branch. And lastly, the resistance of each branch can be different in that parallel circuit. Combination circuits is like putting a series circuit and a parallel circuit together. In the HVAC field, it's most common to find um, series parallel circuits or combination circuits. We usually don't have um, what you call loads, things that consume energy in series with each other, but all the controls or the switches will be in series with the load. And these switches will be in series to be able to operate and control the, the on and off of the operation of the load. So, a series parallel circuit has some components in series and others in parallel. The power source and control of or protection devices are usually in series. The loads are usually in parallel. The same current flows in the series portion differ or current in the parallel portion. The same voltage is applied to the parallel devices, different voltages to the series devices. If the series portion is broken, current stops flowing to the entire circuit. If a parallel branch line is broken, current continues to flow in the series portion and the remaining branch lines. What are the rules of a series parallel circuit? 
So we look at a combination circuit. A resistance and lamp may be connected in a circuit as illustrated on the next slide. This type of uh, connecting method is called series parallel connection and is uh, a combination of series and parallel connections. The interior dashboard lights are a good example. By adjusting the rheostat, which is a variable resistor, or sometimes we call it a dimmer switch, you can increase or decrease the brilliance of the lights. So we look at this diagram and we see a rheostat or a variable resistor in series of the load. And basically by increasing the resistance of that rheostat, the, the lights will go dimmer and by uh, decreasing the uh, resistance of that rheostat, the light bulbs will glow brighter in that parallel circuit. So in other words, the rheostat is in series of the lights and the lights are in parallel with each other. So combination circuits, the combined resistance, we look at this diagram and it's giving us for a parallel circuits how to determine the um, resistance or determine the total resistance in a parallel circuit. So basically, if you have only two resistance in a circuit, we can do the product over the sum. In other words, multiply the two resistance by each other, then divide it by the sum, which is adding the two resistors together. And that will give us the total resistance. Of course, it's only used when you have only two different resistors in a parallel circuit. So the same goes with this, and we look working through the problems, the understanding that if you have uh, a couple of resistors, you can add them together. But when it's um, more, more than one, then you have to do the uh, product over the sum. And going through, we see how then determine the resistance of R2, which is a combination of resistance of one and combined resistance of one connected in series. The total current, which is I, the letter I, flowing in the circuit can be determined from Ohm's law as follow. I equals voltage over resistance. So if you look at the combination of the um, product over sum for the resistance, we can still use this uh, number to determine what the current is if we know the voltage. So the voltage applied to a R2 and R3 can be found by the following formula. Voltage equals R1 times current, which is I, which equals R2 plus or multiplied by R3 divided by R2 plus R3 times the current. So both of these are the same formula, it's just expressing different ways. So where you see on the right, where you see the product over the sum, is how we determine to get V1 equals R1 times I. So we're going through the combination circuits current, uh, the current 1 and current 2 equals the, the current flow through the resistance. And R1, R2, and R3 in the series parallel connection, as shown below, can be determined as follow. And we look at the diagram, we can see how it was worked out by looking at the power source going through the resistance, the two in parallel with each other, and the one resistance that is in series with each other. Basically, this is the same diagram we saw with the light bulbs. Yeah, but we looked at the resistance of the light bulbs, then look at the resistance of the real stat. So to summarize the rules of series parallel and combination circuits, the rules to figure out voltage, resistance, and current for series and parallel circuits are different, and a technician need to understand and learn the difference. 
there are three different types of electrical circuits. Of course, the three types of electrical circuits are the series circuit, the parallel circuit, and a combination circuit. Loads in an electrical control system would always be in a parallel of each other. That is how all devices are operating. We can understand lights in a building or in an office, the lights are in parallel. Because if one light bulb blew out, all the lights will go out. So it's practical to use lights or all different type of loads, even in the HVAC field, in parallel. And the switches and controls will be in series with the load. So switches always will be in series with the load in the electrical circuit. Because the switches being in series of the load and the loads being in parallel of each other, this is what makes HVAC circuits combination circuits. So to summarize this chapter on basic electricity, the state of matter is in three different states solids, liquid, and gases. Atoms are the smallest particles and are made of electrons, protons, and neutrons. Alternating current is produced from induction of magnetism into a coil of wire. Direct current is produced from a chemical reaction into metal plates inside the battery. Electrical energy can be transferred into different forms of energy, such as electrical energy and to mechanical energy. Ohm's law is used to determine voltage, resistance, and current in electrical circuits. Voltage is the force to push electrons through a circuit. Amperage is the flow or movement of electrons in a circuit. And resistance is the impedance of electrons in a circuit.